Hi everyone, good evening. I'm just gonna get started in a quick minute, just setting up the screens. And I think, yes, we're good to go. All right, guys, good evening. I'm Kaizad Marolia. Um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna get started off with a stream. I'm gonna present to you all about um, what the CMT association is, get you oriented to what technical analysis is, basically get you accustomed to some of the terminology, terminologies, uh, how do we work, um, background of the association, background of the internship, what we're going to do. And then we would move over to the Discord channel itself uh, into the networking room where we can actually discuss in person and have a follow-up activity over there. So without wasting time, I'm quickly going to start my presentation. I believe you all should be able to see the screen now. All right. So we're here today to actually understand an uh, overview about the CMT Association, a little bit about what technical analysis is, um, how the industry functions, and then, of course, dive deeper into what this entire internship program holds for you. So let's get started. We'll dive straight into what the CMT Association is. It is a global credentialing and advocacy body um, with over 50 years of service to the financial industry. The CMT Association started off in New York back in 1967, what started off as a group of small, uh, sell -side, a small group of sell side analysts on the Wall Street has now grown into more than four and a half to 5,000 members worldwide. It started off in 1967 as an informal meeting amongst the group where they just met and discussed everything in regards to technical analysis. Um, what are the studies they use? What do they see on trends, patterns, what was going around in the market? And the likes of Ralph Akampora, John Brooks, John Greenlee, uh, they have been credited to be founders of this association. So there were originally 18 members who came together, incorporated the CMT Association as a not-for-profit in 1973. Now, initially, they met to discuss the subject matter of technical analysis, but eventually what they realized was there was a need to qualify uh, the people who actually went through and pursued this subject with the highest discipline. There was born the CMT program. So the organization authorized the certification program and began developing and administering exams in the mid to late 1980s. Now, in 2005, what had happened is FINRA, which is the regulatory authority in US, actually came out with a ruling that's accepted those candidates who had passed level one and level two of the CMT program as a substitute to the series 86 examination, which is a mandatory qualification for the financial analyst there. The f then we moved on with our global expansion. Uh, the first office outside of New York was set up in Mumbai in 2018. And the CMT Association by began its expansion in the Asia Pacific region. And just last year in 2021, the India Liaison Office, which was set up in 2018, grew into the Asia Pacific headquarters. And a special board subcommittee was set up to promote the growth of Asia Pacific. We are an association that is present now across about 137 countries. We have 36 internationally active chapters and throughout our various programming, right? Across all the kind of content that we put out, approximately 35,000 people go through some format of the programming at some point of time. Uh, what's interesting to know that the CMT Association is predominantly a volunteer driven organization. As you can see from the slide, there are three segments. So we have a total of 18 board members who oversee the operations globally and make critical decisions in regards to planning, future, how the association operates and so on. The board is supported by just nine staff members. Um, of which Joel, Joel Panikot and myself, Kaizad Marolia, we are the only two employees across the Asia Pacific region. The remaining seven are all based out of New York and we oversee the entire globe's operations. 
we have over 3000 active charter holders this, actually this number has gone up substantially and the a small group of these active charter holders actually work as volunteers to further the cause of technical analysis and cmp program within their respective regions whether it's working towards the members ecosystem or working externally towards employers advocacy and we'll explore a little bit more about it but globally it is completely a volunteer driven organization i wanted to the, dive a little deeper about the kind of membership structure that we have given that we've been speaking about it um there are four types of memberships right there is a professional membership which is reserved for individuals who practice technical analysis professionally now you must be a member to apply for and use the cmt designation but to qualify a member status you not only have to pass all three levels of the cmt exam but also have a minimum of three years of approved professional work experience now work must be of a full-time nature and you must receive a compensation for your service so managing your own or your own family's money or your friends investments without any form of compensation does not constitute as your approved professional work experience also it's important to know that the membership comes to a halt and the cmt designation can no longer be used if a person is not an active member of the association the affiliate membership is available to anyone interested in technical analysis and for candidates enrolling in the CMP program. So no work experience or adjudication requirement is uh, there for becoming an affiliate member. And there are benefits of becoming an affiliate member, including access to the community, certain events, um, privileged entries into certain uh, conversation groups and so on. Then comes the student membership. Now, student membership is reserved for individuals registered as full-time students of accredited colleges and universities. Now, there is a special section of this as well, which is students who are a part of our CMT Association's academic partner program, which is all of you. These uh, students are eligible for a deep scholarship and a significant portion of the exam fees are cut off, exam registration fees are also cut off. Uh, for student members and uh, specifically for the academic partner program students. And finally, there is an emeritus uh, membership, emeritus membership. This is given and reserved for anyone who is 60 plus years of age, has been a professional member for at least five years and is no longer engaged in any active professional practice on a salary or a fee basis. Uh, this position has the same voting rights and ability to serve as a volunteer leader um just the same as the professional members now diving a little deeper into the actual cmt program what is the cmt program it is a is a preeminent and global designation uh for practitioners of technical analysis so it is a credential that is offered to or rather um honored upon people who have proven their uh, practice in the uh, in this field of technical analysis. It's awarded to those who demonstrate a mastery of a core body of knowledge uh, in investment risk management, portfolio management settings, uh, market investments, and so on. Now, as we discussed before, it is a three-level program, and uh, the designation can only be used not just by people who pass the program, but have to have three years of uh, relevant work experience. Now, the exam occurs twice a year, which is in June and December. So technically, an individual can take and pass all three levels in 18 months, given that they pass every cycle. They are, the three levels are broken down in its curriculum to not just into like level one introduces you to the subject of technical analysis via the concepts, theories, background, and so on. Level two dives deeper into how do you integrate and use technical analysis in your workflow and finally level three touches upon systems development applications of technical analysis and so on as you see from the slide the approximate study hours the size of the text the average passing rate is all mentioned out here now this is a kind of a quick view of the cmt association's um, 
operations in Asia. Uh, currently, US or United States is, of course, the highest uh, member base with about over 1,100 active members. But when you look at Asia, currently, India has the highest number of active members, somewhere around 72 active members. Now, note this is not just uh, the ones who've got charters. These are active members currently who have passed all three levels and are active CMT charter holders. Um, I think about totally over 200 plus charters have been given out in India since the time we started um, administering the exams here. They're followed closely by Singapore, Hong Kong, Thailand, and as you see the list on the slide right now. Now, this is a very important slide. And we will dive a little deeper, and this will be covered very well in your internship because this is the going to be the core focus of your operations or where you are, what projects are going to be assigned, how are you going to work, and so on. So the CMT Association breaks down this operations by what we call as the five pillar strategy. Um, like I said before, the predominant aim or workflow of the CMT Association is twofold. One is the advocacy of technical analysis as a subject, and two is the credentialing, which is the certification and the CMT program. Now, under the advocacy banner, we work across these five pillars. First is the membership. This is an inward looking, um, let's say, pillar where we discuss on what we can do for our member community. Now, whether it be continuing education, keeping our members up to date, um, updating them with events, what's happening, so anything that happens for the member ecosystem, this could be their personal and career development, holding people accountable mutually, uh, providing remuneration opportunities by way of speaking with firms, uh, getting the CMT designation as an accepted qualification for some of the roles, uh, in informing them about what are the benefits and so on. What's also important to know that this community or this membership pillar also is a very strong advocate of ethics, uh, which includes things like not using the CMT designation when you're not an active member. The second pillar is the regulator pillar. So basically what this pillar does is it looks at the regulatory bodies. So how we work with FINRA in US and we've got exemptions. Similarly, our aim is to work with different regulators across the globe. And currently, we're in conversation with, let's say, for example, SEBI in India, Monetary Authority in Singapore, um, Sri Lanka, Bangladesh, and so on, and all of the Asia Pacific regions. So, what we want to do is we want to work with regulators for two folds. One, to have a seat at the table for conversations with regards to policy. So when regulators take a market decision and involve the larger financial ecosystem to give their views, CMT association and by way of CMT charter holders should get a seat at the table to discuss some things that impact them. Second is to lobby for license exemptions like we've done with FINRA, IROC in Canada and a few others. And finally, influence recruiters in agencies to realize that technical analysis is a very important skill set for anyone who is facing the markets of facing customers. And we'll dive deeper into this a little later. The employer ecosystem. Now, if you see the employer and academia pillar, how we'd like to explain it is if you study the uh, law of supply and demand, we describe the employer pillar as the demand side. The employer pillar is are going to be those that are head of desk, recruiters, um, l and professionals, head of firms, who will actually go out in the market and employ people. What we do as an advocacy lens over here is we inform them about the benefits of using technical analysis in their existing workflow or hiring people who have knowledge of technical analysis by the way of the CMP program so that they can perform their jobs better. Take a simple example, um, everyone wants the maximum return that they can get from a trading workflow or an investment workflow. But what is the risk that you are willing to take when trying to earn that income? That is what we try to explain to our employer ecosystem. That let's say something as simple as the first principles of technical analysis helps you manage your risk better, helps you time your entry exit strategy. And how we say that all market and uh, customer facing roles 
should in some way incorporate principles and studies of technical analysis within their workflow. So we work with the employer ecosystem, which is head of desk, um, head of firms, recruitment, L&D professionals to, let's say, inform and make them aware about the benefits of the subject and how they can incorporate it within their existing employee base as well as new employees that they hire. On the flip side is your academia pillar. Academia forms the supply side for us. What this pillar does is that it basically talks about uh, the student community or the professor community. So if the employers are looking at um, hiring, where does the supply come from? That's where academia comes in. So what we do is we work with institutes under via the academic partner program to get students to take the CMT program while they're studying for their course as an additional course so that by the time they actually hit the or rather graduate and hit the employability market, they are career ready. Um, it distinguishes them from the general audience and says that, OK, I've taken level one and level two of the CMT program, if not level three, and I am ready to put these skills into practice. So we work with them to grow the CMT candidate base. We encourage research in the field of technical analysis via research labs, professors, students, they are taking it and influence these schools, including how to include technical analysis into the curriculum. Uh, you'd be surprised that most institutes, especially in India, do not have much of technical analysis covered in their curriculum. And it's very important to have that from, if nothing else, purely a risk management perspective or an investment decision-making perspective. And finally comes the media pillar. Now, this is a very interesting pillar because if you, seeing the media especially the financial media you'll see a lot of people randomly going up on television giving quotes out on social media posts saying invest in this security because literally some people have said the stars have aligned to give me this view or for that matter some people say that i can see your head and shoulders planted and because of this you should listen to me now it's very impossible important for the media uh, entity as well as us as the same association to advocate that you get the right people in front of the public uh, because a lot of people including our parents use invest their hard-earned money uh, on basis of these calls right so it is important that we get the correct professional who has studied practiced and incorporated a rigorous discipline to go out and give recommendations based on uh, legitimate information that they've gathered, but not just that, but even take precautions for risk management. And you'll see me here, and you'll hear me say this quite often, and you will see when we work on the projects about it as well. So working with the various media houses, making them aware about what technical analysis is, because most media houses don't even know, uh, improving the public perception of TA, building the brand for charter holders, that's how we work with the media pillar. Right. Then we move into the academic partner program. And that's one of the reasons why all of you are here. This is our initiative to work with universities. And I'll quickly jump across the four, uh, four or five aspects that we work with the, uh, under the academic partner program. And we'll dive deeper in our future calls and projects. But the program involves work signing a non-commercial MOU with partner universities and engaging them to get more people informed about technical analysis as well as go through the CMP program. How we do that is options like the Campus Ambassador Program, which is a live project that we run throughout the calendar year and assign small micro tasks. The Internship Challenge, which you all went through and got selected as interns to work with a global association like the CMP Association. The Investment Challenge, which will come up, if I'm not mistaken, in June, July where it will be a simulated portfolio trading game where participants which are exclusively from academic partner program institute as well as candidates of the cmp program will invest a dummy corpus or an assigned port amount of the for the portfolio based on principles of technical analysis and you will be judged on risk adjusted returns important to note here that this competition last year was run as a pilot in india and this year we're taking it global. 
Apart from these competitions, uh, we do conduct a lot of sessions, workshops. Um, we talk about careers in technical analysis. We get charter holders to come in and do workshops, uh, host events like the chapter meeting where we invite even the academia pillar uh, to come and attend. But the most important part of the academic partner program is the scholarship. Um, under this program, full-time students and faculty of our academic partner institutes have a substantial waiver of the fee when it comes to taking the program. So if you see from this slide, every level somewhere works out to about $800 uh, just for the exam registration fees and so on. Under the academic partner program, this gets subsidized to just $113 per level. So full-time students of graduate institutes get this scholarship for level one and level two, postgraduate institutes, sorry. And for undergraduate institutes, it's only for level one. And for faculty members, who, again, who are full-time faculty members, they are, they are eligible for scholarships across all three levels. Apart from just the program and registration fee, our partners like Optima and Wiley offer substantial discounts and freebies as well. So Optima provides a charting platform for you to practice what you're learning free of cost to all candidates who are going through this program. Wiley, who is the official publisher, um, where the curriculum is provided, the digital copy, the ebook is provided at $180, is now only provided at $75 to students who are going through the academic partner program route. This slide basically just shows you some of the partners that we currently have. We have about 50 universities um, as partners globally, 27 of which are in Asia. Uh, you will recognize your logos over here as well. So that covers up the background about the association program. Of course, we will dive deeper as we work together. But I wanted to highlight something that forms the crux of why we're here today, right? the subject matter of technical analysis. So I'm going to quickly take you through a basic understanding of what technical analysis is so that, you know, it will help you in your workflow. And I'm going to give you a project at the end of it for your the start of your internship. So pay attention. This is important. So what exactly is technical analysis? Technical analysis is a trading discipline employed to evaluate investments and identify opportunities in price trends and patterns. So if you see the definition over here, it is the study of prices and volumes in freely traded markets with the intent of making profitable strategic or investment decisions. So let's dive a little deeper. It's basically nothing but the understanding of mass human behavior as it interplays in the marketplace. We've all studied the law of supply and demand. So technical analysis is nothing but how these laws play out and how the application of these laws work in the marketplace. What is important to note here is that the laws of, uh, is that there should be a large number of market participants, which is buyers and sellers who are acting freely based on their own investment or information that they've gathered, investment decisions or information that they've gathered. Now, this is a study of behaviors and how it relates to price and volume and other price indicators. Now, behavioral psychology, which has been around for so many years, but has picked up momentum in the last 15 years or so. And it says that human beings are inherently biased. Um, they have some kind of behavioral biases that play out. And in a collective space like the markets, they tend to form predictable patterns. Fear, greed are examples, right? Fear of missing out, uh, fear of losing out, fear of loss of capital. Greed, where you want to hold on to a position for longer, thinking that the prices will continue to go up indefinitely. Um, these all emotions play out in the market. And technical analysis is nothing but understanding, recognizing these patterns, trends, how they play out, and making your investment decisions based on these. So the three assumptions that technical analysis is undertakes when you're taking any of the studies is that the sum total of all the information out there results in supply and demand. And this sum total is discounted or rather captured in the price. And that's why your investment decisions are based off price. So hence price discounts everything and takes into factor all of those beliefs.
Another important point is that prices move in trends. And these could be trends in the short term, medium term, or long term. And price patterns that form are fractal in nature. That is, they repeat themselves across various time periods. And we'll dive a little deeper when we're studying the subject even more. And finally, history repeats itself. So even though the reasons of market euphoria or panic may be different, there is a tendency of a repetitive nature of these kind of instances occurring and fear and greed, how it plays out, uh, how the market participants act, uh, act upon each other. That's actually what technical analysis is. Give me one second, please. Just give me one second, guys. Sorry guys, I'm back. Yeah, so let me take off from here. So now that you understand what technical analysis is, right? Where does it fit into the industry? So anyone who either faces the market or faces the customer is, uh, is a user of technical analysis or technical analysis as a skill set comes to use over there, right? So. Now, very often we get asked the question for careers in technical analysis. And often there is a misconception that this study is only for a technical analyst. And this couldn't be further than incorrect or more incorrect. Because as we explored earlier, anyone with a market or customer facing role can use skill sets of technical analysis and the first principles of technical analysis. So these roles that you see out here, it's just a very short, uh, brief summary of the kind of roles that come out there. But across all these segments, like corporations, banks, brokers, um, investment houses, or for that matter, treasury managers, the roles that play out like fund managers, sales traders, dealers, portfolio managers, anyone with a front office or a markets facing role or a customer facing role can use technical analysis. One important thing to note is that even C-suite executives who monitor cycles over longer term nature also use technical analysis. Yeah. Well, when it comes to even modern careers, right? When you're looking at things like quantitative finance, algorithmic trading, systems design, systems development, TA forms a very crucial skill set. Um, I wanted to highlight a little more about cryptocurrencies because if you've read about it, if you've heard about it, today there is no fundamental data that backs cryptocurrencies. There is no way to analyze them except for TA, except for technical analysis, understanding trends, patterns, how prices are moving, what is the market uh, indicating, putting in correct risk management positions for it. That's what technical analysis is. Even for non-finance careers, for example, journalism, um, education, where it comes either to teaching, research, uh, can leverage technical analysis to a high degree in their work. And this is something that Joel and myself explained quite keenly. Um, it's today, there's a buzzword that's been around for a while now about FinTech, right? And whenever someone thinks about FinTech and whenever people talk about FinTech, they think FinTech is nothing but they think fintech is nothing but coding. So they think that if I learn tech and if I learn coding, uh, I will have made a career in fintech. Now, again, this couldn't be further from incorrect because what do you do with learning a programming language? Uh, what will you put it to use? So for putting it to use, you need data. Data could be in the form of prices, economic data, company data, industry data, news, and so on. But let's say even if you learn the skill of coding and someone give you the data, how would you actually apply it? That's where the first principles of technical analysis comes in. To be able to 
understand how to use massage and leverage this data is forms the bedrock of this pyramid as you see over here and the best part is that the first principles of technical analysis are asset class and geography agnostic what that means is that you can the principles that you learn you can use it in any geography any region any kind of security whether it be currencies equities uh, cryptocurrencies commodities anything and form your entire career shape uh, career pyramid based on those first principles another very important thing that Joel and myself talk about when we conduct sessions for not just institutes students professors uh, but even the employer ecosystem we get asked this question that what is better fundamental or technical analysis and we discourage this kind of a conversation actively because they're not a competing skill set they are actually complementary uh, in nature you cannot substitute one for another uh, comparing technical analysis and fundamentals is outright wrong the best careers and investment decisions are actually shaped by complementing these skills putting them into practice and actually leveraging each one for their benefits well, while fundamental analysis studies things like focuses on companies its operations revenues earnings management and so on and potentially tracks what the fair what a potential value for the company and the price would be technical analysis focuses on price on volume on interaction of these behaviors um like momentum price patterns trends helping you time market entry so how do you get to this potential value of a company should i be leveraging my capital and investing in this company now or is there a better timing is there a better instrument that i can plow my funds into uh, so that the opportunity cost is not that high uh, both help you get a very clear sense of the philosophy of the market and investments but i would like to add to the favor of technical analysis that the data tools available are far more accessible you have a lot of free sources you have a lot of data that's freely available that you can leverage quickly even if you can't do fundamentals technical analysis can help you in your investment decisions market analysis risk management and so on and like we explained earlier uh it's geography and asset class agnostic so once you learn it with a little understanding of the security asset class and the geography you can actually leverage the skill sets that you've learned under ta which brings us to the 2022 internship program so I'll quickly take you through what the program is. I will assign you the first project and then we'll quickly meet in the networking room to have an in-person discussion. So this program is a remote internship for two months period, which will be task-based. You will be assigned projects, tasks that you have to complete based on deadlines. Joel, myself, Rohit, who's your program manager, will be constantly in touch with you to check on status. But apart from these responsibilities right, that you see over here, which is the CMP projects, advocacy projects, uh, understanding and working with industry professionals and micro assignments. We also want you to take back a lot. So don't think of this as your rumored internship that they ask you to take Xeroxes and make coffee and all this doesn't work like that. What this is going to do is it's going to take, give you a lot of learnings and learnings could be about technical analysis. It could be about uh, the subject matter, how a global organization works, all of it. But more importantly, we're also going to pack up some mentorship sessions. We're going to talk about career guidance and soft skills. So be open, be inquisitive, hungry, whatever you want to call it. Make sure that you take back more than you give because that's the entire concept of an internship that you learn, uh, you develop your career. You take guidance from people who walk the path. Uh, one important point to note that the only platforms we'll be using will be Discord and email. So keep your eyes out for both. Um, we will not be doing calls uh, via phones. We will not be using WhatsApp, preferably not any of these platforms. Discord and emails will be the primary platforms. 
we've kind of structured out the calendar of activities uh, for you. This is a quick view into what the internship calendar of events holds for you. Again, this is just a guideline. It's spread across two months. So I can review this a little later. We'll start assigning tasks to you. We we'll start assigning projects. As you can see from the calendar, you have a mix of projects, calls, mentorship sessions, career guidance sessions, and so on. And yeah, so we have the four of y'all joining us. Unfortunately, one intern wasn't able to join us because of prior professional commitments. But we're really happy to have the four of y'all here. Um, think of yourselves as one unit working towards the common goal. Uh, Rohit, myself, Joel, we'll constantly be in touch with you. We do not follow a SOAR culture. Um, we we'll speak about this in the networking room. If you have questions, if you have feedback, if you think something strongly about, we always encourage open conversations, open dialogue. So we actually encourage um, even critical feedback because that's the best way we move forward. And finally, your project. So before you actually join us, right, uh, by 2nd May, what we want you to do is create a five minute video of yourselves, you can record yourselves, you can uh, use graphics, animations, recordings, anything. What we want is that we want you to explain an introduction about technical analysis and an introduction about the CMT association. So what you've understood so far, it doesn't have to be just from this presentation, you can do external research, you can go to the CMT website, you can go online and search about technical analysis, understand, digest, and then create something, some basic guidelines, um, keep the resolution at 1080p for good quality, upload it, upload the video to your YouTube channel and share the link with us. And be sure to include your name when you are submitting it. Now, all these submissions happen in Discord. Give me one second. I'll just quickly try and pull up the platform if you can see. So as you can see over here, the Discord segment your submissions will be over here, right? So whenever we give you projects, uh, we would like you to submit the links, information, and so on over here. Uh, apart from that, lobby, open conversation segment, you can talk here, uh, chat amongst yourselves, chat with us. Uh, please note that this is a public platform so people can see what you've written. Any questions that you have, you can post it out here, whether it be related to tasks, whether it be related to anything at all. Keep your Q&As. We've divided these segments so that it can be focused conversation. Updates with regards to tasks, future calls, sessions, streams will be all done in guidelines and updates. And finally, the meeting room. So we're going to come back to the meeting room now. We're going to have an in-person discussion. Uh, Joel, myself, I think Rohit's also online. I will see you all there and let's begin the show with the event, guys. So I'll see you all there in just right now.